What's going on, Falcon fan? This is Barbara Kundu coming back at you with another video. Going to report some roster news today. A waving and a signing. Of course, that's what you got to do to keep the 90 man roster going. Atlanta Falcons reportedly have waived linebacker Michael Walker, a guy who actually started for the Atlanta Falcons last season. And they signed Defensive Player of the Year from the USFL, Frank Genda. We're going to talk about both of those moves today and what it actually means for the Atlanta Falcons linebacker position moving forward. So guys, with that being said, if you have not already, go ahead and please subscribe to this channel. Please hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another video. Please hit the like button so I know you guys like here that I talk about. Then please share my video throughout the YouTube universe so more people can come in and hear me talk about these Atlanta Falcons. So, like I said guys, it's been reported that the Atlanta Falcons have signed USFL Defensive Player of the Year, Frank Genda. A guy who actually went undrafted back in 2018, played with San Jose, um, had stints with the Cardinals, the Dolphins, played with the AAF, AAF and XFL, but just could never really get on a roster and stick in the NFL. Well, however, he gets his chance once again with the Atlanta Falcons. We know the Atlanta Falcons always trying to look for that diamond in the rough. A guy that's hungry, that's want to come in, compete, improve himself, just like a guy. Our boy D. Alford, right? Um, they brought in numerous guys from the XFL um, this training camp as well. So Atlanta Falcons going to make sure that they give every guy that's hungry to come in and actually, you know, participate and compete and see can they actually get on the NFL roster. Um, our linebacker room is kind of where we thought we might have been the weakest position anyway so bringing in another guy that they feel that can compete a guy that had just you know just had previous success just a few months ago in the usfl coming in you know trying to show that competitiveness trying to get in the lead to the atlanta falcon with this one of the most competitive teams you know during training camp so far so you're really gonna like bringing him in and see what he's going to be all about However, you know, bringing in a body, the Atlanta Falcons decide to wave. Um, former starter of the Atlanta Falcons, Michael Walker, guy who was with the reg last regime, you know, drafted by Thomas Dimitrov and Dan Quinn, kind of fell out of favor last year with the um, defensive coordinator Dean Pease, lost his uh, starting position to Troy Anderson, and, you know, really just could not get it what they wanted him to do you know the film don't lie that's one thing about football when you're trying to you know decide where the guy can play or he can't play right that's what the all 22 is about that's when you go back and you look at film you can, you can talk a good game you can have all the measurements in the world the speed the athleticism and things like that but when you cut on the tape look at the film that's where it really boils down to um if you go back to what Pro Football Focus, and not saying Pro Football Focus is the end-all, be-all, but they did grade Michael Walker 31 um, percentile um, last, in the last preseason game, and that's from 1 to 100. He was a 31, the lowest-graded guy on the Atlanta Falcons that last preseason game that he played. So he played, pretty, played a pretty, pretty good bit in that game. Um, didn't have, you know, good fairing. He, Made a couple of plays. I think he ended up with four combined tackles. He had 11 snaps on special teams. So he had opportunity to, you know, to put his self on film again to show his tape, to show some of the things that he could do. But for some, whatever reason, um, it was not up to the par of the standards that Atlanta Falcons would like. So they decided to let him go. Now, he started 20 games for the Atlanta Falcons in his tenure here. Um, 187 combined tackles, three interceptions. Remember, one of those interceptions was a pick six from Cam Newton a couple of years ago. Um, he had one sack, and that sack came from the number first game last season against the New Orleans Aints. So, you know, Michael Walker probably never fit what Dean Pease wanted him to do. Um, and then going into the new head coach, Ryan Nielsen, you thought maybe, you know, he could, could you know, turn a new leaf and find a role here. Obviously, that was still was not the case. So, you know, all best luck to Michael Walker. 
really don't know um you know where he kind of fit in the lead i thought he probably was our best um coverage linebacker in space um we'll have to see where they're going to find that at and then we'll talk about you know um the linebacker position in just a minute but you know michael walker for some reason just could not fit what the line of falcons wanted and they decided to let him go for us to cap you know structure and things like that don't help the falcons either way um which means it tells me that when you let a guy go that has that much experience in a in a position room that is already where i i would you know kind of say lacking a little bit that means that he just was not cutting the mustard because it's still you know two preseason games to go you know they didn't have to cut him right away they could have waited so for whatever reason they decided to cut him right now so that would tell you a lot what the Atlanta Falcons thought about a guy like Michael Walker well being bringing him in looking at that linebacker room um, still in my opinion it still definitely needs room for improvement um, Hopefully they're 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 banking on Troy Anderson being a better guy in coverage this year. Um, you know that 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 jump from year one to year two is really going to be big for a guy like Troy Anderson. Um, but guys like Tay Davis in the back, um, and one guy that really showed up and then I talked about him um, last game was um, Jones Jr. That guy really flashed for us, looked like a, a young Deion Jones out there flying around. Um, but you can see Atlanta Falcons one of the bigger linebackers, linebackers that are going to come downhill, being able to fill those 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 run gaps where where the the hit the front line is going to take on all the double teams. So those linebackers are going to play a big role in stopping the run this year, and that's where I think Michael Walker really um, kind of hurt himself because he wasn't feeling those run gaps like he needed to miss tackles um, out of space out of the um, positions where he needed to be and that's how you know big runs happen outside containment all kind of things you want to look at like I say you go back and look at the film and you can see some of those things that flash where Michael Walker was not where he's supposed to be so um, bringing in a guy like Frank Ginda a guy that you know, just came having success from his previous spot. Um, we'll see what he'll be able to bring to the table. But in my opinion, and I really want to hear from you guys, um, what do you feel about our in inside linebacker position? Um, if one of our two starters go down and Caden Ellis and Troy Anderson, the depth there, do you like where it's at? Um, I think Nate Lamon really flashed a little, a little bit in the preseason game. But um, Tay Davis, you know, a guy that's played a lot of special teams come in. Can he be that fourth guy? Or can Frank Ginder be that guy? We really don't know. We're going to have to find out. But right now, in my opinion, the Atlanta Falcons probably could. Rashawn Evans is still out there, right? A guy who led the team in tackles last year. Still out there. Hasn't been signed yet. So, that they may be a route that they could consider going down. Um no, a little bit, little a smaller linebacker than maybe that they want in the middle, but somebody that has a lot of potential has that dog in him. I feel that can come in and help this team out, and you know, a time of need. But um, that position, in my opinion, is still kind of light. Um, but we'll have to see what the Atlanta Falcons decide to do. This tells me when when you look at guys getting cut. In the middle of, of training camp, like I said, with two preseason games left, where you don't have to cut anybody now into the last preseason game, it tells me that the Atlanta Falcon is really serious about um, the direction they want their defense to go in this year. All right, it's they're not playing around. Um, they want to be able to find guys that's going to get it right, that compete. They want to have the depth in the right positions and things like that. So this this tell, speaks a lot of volumes to you know. What they thought about Michael Walker as a whole, like I said, cut him so early. And then, you know, what they think about this defense as a whole and what they want this defense to be able to do um, this upcoming season. All right, if you look at it, if you look at the um, the projected depth chart that they had out, they they showed seven new starters on defense. All right, just, just imagine what I'm telling you. Seven new starters. It's only 11 
guys that right that that's there. Eleven guys that's on the defense, and we got seven new starters. That tells you a lot about when people talk about the defense from last season. It's not the same defense, right? The four guys that's left, right? We know who those guys are: AJ Terrell, Grady Jarrett, Richard Grant, and Troy Anderson. That's the that's the four guys that's left on the defense. Everybody else is potentially going to be a um a new starter in this 2023 defense for the Atlanta Falcons, right? The rotation is going to be su- as such, but bringing guys in like Amiyada, Jesse Bates, Bud Dupree, um, right? Think about it. You got to love it. You got to love it. Atlanta Falcons is really serious about defense. That's what we've seen in that Miami game. I think if you put it into to- totality about that, that Dolphins game, that preseason, it was more about the defense than anything that – our offense could have did. Of course, the offense got to put points up, but the way the defense performed um, in critical situations, because yes, they gave up yards, but when they counted most in situational football, the defense bowed his head and was able to make plays. So that's what you got to love about what they're trying to bring to this Atlanta Falcons team. So, you know, these moves that you see the Atlanta Falcons making, um, it's made for a reason. It's strategic. Um, still, kind of you know, kind of shaky on the linebacker position. But when you look at it as a whole, the Atlanta Falcons is serious about making this defense one of the best defenses in the league. So, guys, let me know what you think about the you know the wavering or a linebacker Michael Walker and what you think that Frank Ginda can bring to this linebacker room and maybe just maybe. They might want to call Rashawn Evans and see if he's still available to play some, you know, NFL football. This is your boy Ricondo coming back at you with another video. Peace.